Ryan Malone's from Pittsburgh. You played in the NHL 600 and I could say 47, yeah, 647 games. Penguins, Lightning and Rangers. Ryan Malone joins us now. He's been on the program before. And the last time, hey, Ryan, welcome back. You were spearheading the movement to save Robert Morris University, which my niece had committed to, if you remember. She had to go to Mercyhurst because of that. And I never heard much. I heard you saved it. Is that what we're talking yeah, about we, today? Uh, no, I, we were talking <clears throat> playoff hockey and all kinds of hockey things, I think. But, uh, yeah, we ended up, uh, okay. all of us, the hockey community uh, saved it. So uh, it was great to be a part of. Um, they were the only Division One programs in Pittsburgh, the men's and women's programs that were, unfortunately, cut, but they are back. Last year was the first year. Got to go see uh, the opening game there, and you really – uh, forget about that college hockey atmosphere with the band and all the guys are, you know, the, the intensity and it was great to see. So it was great for the city of Pittsburgh. We all rallied there to pull together to, to help the teams out. You probably haven't talked about that for a while, but I haven't. That's got to feel good to be a part of pulling that off, I would think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I think way at the beginning, I understand, I think, the power of the hockey community it is a small community I, i've been fortunate to be a part of it a long time with my dad uh playing in the nhl and kind of growing up uh in the rinks there in pittsburgh at the civic arena back in the day when my dad was the head scout so uh very fortunate to be part of the hockey community and understand uh, the power we have when we all come together um you look at even the alumni event in, in st louis a few weeks ago um i think we raised eight hundred thousand dollars for the, the v foundation the cancer foundation um, you know, supporting mm -hmm. Kelly Chase, all of, our other, all, all of our other brothers battling. So it really shows what uh, the alumni, in um, and, and general, the, every hockey community there around the world, that what we can do when we come together. So very uh, special to be part of that. Yeah, well, congratulations for your role in that. And you bring the fans in. It's a very powerful force, as you say. Well, I'll tell you what. Going into the regular, or coming out of the regular season, best ending in NHL history, right? Going right down to the last hour. We thought it was going to be the best first round ever. Now we're into round two. Have these been the best playoffs ever? Well, the Penguins aren't in them, so I wouldn't think you would think that they are. But what's been your assessment <laughs> so far of these Stanley Cup playoffs? Yeah, I think playoff hockey is just a whole different animal. So I think everyone tunes in regular season. You know, you catch some games when you can, but, you know, the playoffs are on you. Uh, you know, plan the nights to, to watch the games because they are so exciting. The back and forth, the hits, the guys just sacrificing it, laying all on the line is, uh, to me, there's no, no better playoffs than the hockey playoffs. So it's just been great to watch some great games last night going into overtime. Um, you know, as you mentioned a little earlier there with Colorado, um, they kind of been under the radar, surprisingly. So I know they took care of the Jets there uh, a little easier than people thought. but. Uh, that's the way it goes. Sometimes when you look at the Lightning as well, you know, got obviously outed by the, the Panthers, but those games were, were neck and neck and, you know, bounce here or there could have gone uh, maybe the Lightning way as well. So you always tune in for those playoff games. and It'll be exciting to see you know, what happens here down the stretch. I'll tell you what, whoever came up with that slogan, because it's the cup, uh, deserves a raise. The person's probably not even still around, but they, because it's the cup, we do some crazy things. Um, <laughs> you mentioned Florida uh, Lightning lost, got bounced in five by the Panthers. I would be very interested because you spent so much time in Tampa with the Lightning. Where are they? Are they plateaued? Are they going down? Are they just retooling and going up? Where are the Lightning, do you think? <clears throat> I think with their core, I mean, it'll be interesting. A little surprise, obviously, Stammer's not. Uh, you know, signed up yet. I think he's, um, geez, for the last decade, been a tremendous uh, leader. Um, you look at uh, what he's done for the, the team, you know, on the ice and then off the ice. And that leadership, you definitely see come playoff time how that's needed, um, especially when you bring in those the younger pieces, um, which they have. Um, you look at the Hagel this year and uh, some other pieces. Um, I think they're right there. You know, they got they get the core is still there with that experience. And uh, Stammer looks like he was just, you know, taking his game to another level, even this, this playoff. So exciting to see him uh, continue to thrive, and hopefully they can uh, ink that deal and continue to move forward. But I definitely see in the next few years they have a chance to, to grab one or two.
I was uh, in the room when John Cooper was asked after this series about Steven Stamkos' future, and he's like, he belongs here. Um, he goes, it shouldn't be a long conversation between him and Julian Breesbaugh. He goes, but it's also not my decision. I shouldn't speak for them. <laughs> who, who knows how it's going to go? Tell me something about John Cooper. Would that not surprise you that he would answer it that way? Yeah. I mean, obviously his hands, I mean, he can obviously, uh, you know, say what he wants, but it is at the end of the day a business as well. And as players, you, you forget that sometimes, but man, to, to see where, you know, he come in as 18 year old, um, and where the lightning were, and then just actually moving back to Tampa here recently, a few months ago to see where the city is now mm. and what a hockey town it is. Um, you know, I mean, when your captain's getting the Mark Messier leadership award, I think that says a lot about his character. And uh, those guys don't come around very often. So um, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. But he, I definitely believe he should be a bolt for life and should probably get a nice big statue there, too. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. Right beside Phil. But I'll tell you, um, kudos to you again for being a part of building that because I'm over here near sunrise. And the Panthers fans, we all went over there in the playoffs, and they looked around. They're like, we got a long ways to go. So the Lightning have really built something, and uh, good for them and for everybody that's part of that. But uh, you are a Pittsburgh guy. You got, must be following the Penguins. Like Kyle Dubas, I thought, was brought in to save everything. And then Eric Carlson, and it didn't happen. Where, where are they going? Well, I think it, 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 you look at their, their stats and the way they played, I mean, Actually, their five-on-five five play was, you know, I think top three or five in the league all year. And I think just that the power play there, for whatever reason, just wasn't clicking. And, uh, you know, that, those extra goals um, can definitely put you in, in the mix. You know, even if their power play is in the top 15, um, they, probably, they probably would have snuck in. Um, they had a, definitely had a few games slip away in the third period where they could have closed out a little better. But... Um, you know, even when people are counting him out, you know, Sid's leading the charge. His uh, mentality doesn't change. He's there to do it the right way and, um, you know, be relentless. So, I mean, it is. Um, I, I would never count those guys out as long as those guys got the, got the skates on. Well, I'll tell you what. Not him, not as a leader. I think he's going to play for a long time because he's not only trying very hard, he's still very effective. But you're, you cover or you follow the league there's this narrative that he's getting frustrated that they're not what they were. And could you blame him? Like, how do you, how do you <laughs> respond to that? Yeah. I mean, he, he plays to win the Stanley cup and be in the playoffs. That's uh, as we know, that's the most fun time of year is to play for playoff hockey to try to go after the Stanley cup. And um, I, I think for, for him, he probably is a little frustrated. You know, I mean, he, he wants to win. So I think ultimately, um, you know, he does what he can. And uh, like he said, he can only control so much. And that's the way he takes care of himself, the way he leads, the way he plays. And um, the rest is need some help from management a little bit. And um, from being in Pittsburgh and actually getting a call a few games, personally, you would like to see, you know, some fourth line guy in there to just help give those guys a little more space when you see. Sid and the Tang and Gino always getting punched in the head or um, leading the charge in the physical department as well. Um, just I think maybe from my role when I was playing, it is it's, it's tough to watch sometimes and your belly gets uh, into it. I was talking to Max Talbot and Colby Armstrong a little bit about that. So, but those guys still are, you know, so passionate and driven. Um, you know, I, I would never count those guys out. So hopefully they can uh, bring in some pieces there that can get, put them over the hump. Good chat. Hey, I can't let you go because I don't know when I'm going to talk to you again. Producer Clark said there was something charity related that you wanted to mention. So if it's not Robert Morris University, what was it that he was referring to? Oh, we uh, next week, our foundation, the Malone Family Foundation is uh, hosting a black and gold breaking the mold event. We partnered with MTV on their mental health action day. So we're bringing awareness to action and our action is hockey. So we're focusing on our, our veterans and first responders and how the game uh, helps bring people together and helps um, people overcome their challenges. So we're very fortunate to have a celebrity game, a hero celebrity game uh, back in Pittsburgh. So we have uh, Brett Kiesel from the Steelers is joining us again. 
and he last year he wore his uh, Steeler helmet the whole time. So I thought that was pretty cool. And then we have uh, six different teams locally there around Pittsburgh. We have different representatives from uh, the Pittsburgh Icemen. We have the, the fire firemen team, uh, Pittsburgh Warriors, Johnstown Generals. It's about the Warriors, so different veteran teams all represented in the game as well. And uh, we have, um, even the night before, we have a little Q&A talk about mental health. We have Corey Hirsch coming in to play in the game, um, tell his story, really highlighting what the hockey community is doing already in that mental health space and how you can use hockey as healing. So our tagline is hockey is healing. And um, if you want to support, you can check it out at hockeyishealing.org. And, um, you know, it's the second year of the, of the, the game and we're expe- expected a good turnout and then continue to grow. And um, like I said earlier, even about the RMU um, opportunity, it's really just highlighting what the hockey community can do uh, in a positive realm. And um, we're excited to be a part of it. Guy, when it's over, because obviously this is a big deal, come back on and tell me about it because I'm a certified mental health coach, um, licensed interventionist in the state of Florida. Just got to get talking about it. So you do you and come back yeah. and let's talk about it more, man. Uh, okay, kudos to you for doing that. Yeah, we'll definitely reach out. We're hoping to do uh, our foundation does these warrior hockey academies where it's free for veterans. Um, we kind of run them through like a, a training camp uh, as hockey on the ice and then off the ice kind of teach them some skills uh you know mind body uh spirit stuff so we're hoping to do one uh in florida so we'll definitely be reaching out we'd love to get you involved nice namaste thanks ryan thanks for the time all right thank you (laughs) yes sir (laughs) ryan malone nhl veteran how about that i could go on for another hour now on that yeah write it down clark we got to get him on in a couple weeks once they do that thing. Right on.